Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this video, I'll be doing a review of PhotoWorks 6.0. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button and, of course, share with your friends. Just click on share right down there and share through social media. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Just click on subscribe. Okay, let's get to it. PhotoWorks is an image enhancement, image editing tool with a lot of automation and AI built into it. It's real, real nice, great tool for doing quick cleanup and adjustments to your pictures. Very useful if you do a lot of shots like this one here, where you need to have some enhancement or even change the background. Now it comes in three versions, but I recommend just going ahead and going for the Pro version, which is only $56, so it's you know inexpensive even for their highest version. So I'll go ahead and just get the highest version and get all the features. Now the way this thing works is that we have several tabs up here, several tools. Here's our enhancements section, and that brings up this bit over here. You can see here we have our main window and then specific color adjustments in here, hue or saturation or luminance, either way you want to look at that. There's also a sharpness tool right here for doing sharpening. Go back here to the main window. There we are. There's some additional tools in here for cropping, adjusting geometry, changing the background. This is available only in the Pro version. Vignetting, tone mapping, noise reduction, curves, grain, a lot of adjustments in here. There's a retouch section, automatically improving faces here, a little portrait magic, a bit of the AI that's included. Real nice tool. Healing brush, red eye removal, clone stamp, adjustment brush, graduated filter, and radio filter. Lots and lots of tools available over in here to do retouching. And then effects. These are what are called presets in most other programs. Lots and lots of options. There's simply a set of adjustments you can apply to your image just with one click. Quite a few, as you can see, a whole lot of possible adjustments in here. And different categories as well. Popular, vintage, quick enhancements, toning, lighting, photographic films, and movie effects as well. You also can put captions on your image if you want to just put some text right on your image. Now, it isn't a perfect program, but for you know under 60 bucks for its most expensive version, I wouldn't expect this to be any kind of competing product to Photoshop, you know, which costs hundreds in the long run. So you know, for what it is, it's a great program, great little program, and very useful for this kind of quick and easy adjustment. Let's walk you through this one bit here. I'll show you how I made this to the adjustments over here based on the original picture right there, and this will give you a good sense of how this program works. We'll start down here at the bottom of the screen. You have undo and redo buttons right there. You can reset back to the original right here, and you can Change your view. Here is the original, and there is the finished view right there, a little sampling. I also have a set here for a before and after. We can change this over here to just the after, and then click between before and after. So I've done a few things. I've cropped it on the image. I've, of course, changed the color toning in here on the image, warmed the image up quite a bit, improved the contrast, and also changed the background all very, very quickly. On the right-hand side here, you can search for folders down here. You can adjust the image. Click on Fit. There we go. It now fits the workspace. We can go one-to-one, -one, adjust our scaling right down there. So a lot of those controls are right across the bottom. Very easy to get to. I'm going to reset this back to the original set and click on Reset. We'll just discard all of those adjustments. And there we are. There's the original picture. Now the first thing I want to do here is to change the cropping. She's rather low in here in the frame. There's way too much space on the left-hand side. She's just basically centered in the picture, kind of her chin's right in the center of the picture right there. So we need to change our cropping. And that's over here on the second tab on Tools. You'll also find all of these up here across the top. We have our tools right there and our retouching right in here and of course our view controls right there. All things that are easily available everywhere else in the image. So here's our tools. First option is crop. I'll click on this one. This brings up the crop image. I'm going to be going here for an 8 by 10 and that's the same thing as a 5x4 photo. Same ratio, 8x10, 5x4, same thing. So click on that one. And that gives me the basic 8x10 ratio. Now, she's looking off to the right-hand side, so it's a good idea to always have more space where a person is looking and less space in behind their head over here. So I'll just move this, and that looks pretty good. Once I get her 
out of that centered position, all of a sudden the picture looks a lot better. I don't even mind the space above here that much. It's a much better composition once I get her, you know, get cropped in a little bit and get her moved over a bit further towards the left. As you can see, there are lots of options in here for doing your crop. And you also can adjust the grid overlay in here. Rule of thirds, grid, diagonal, triangle, golden ratio, golden spiral, lots of options in there as well. And you can rotate the grid, rotate your crop also right here, also rotate left and right by 90 degrees. But we're all set, that looks fine. I'll click on apply, and there we go. Already, it's a better picture because I had more space over here and less space there. She's not really so static by being centered in the frame. It's just a better composition. Now we need to work on her coloration. She's really kind of washed out. We've lost a lot of contrast in here. Her tones are kind of, kind of dull at this point. So we can fix all of that. If you look up here at the histogram, you can see here's our colors, and they're all bunched up right down towards one end, and there are light areas here are all real low and all very, very similar, and that's what we're seeing in here in our image. Okay, let's just switch back to the enhancement now. There we go. We can work in the main control here, or colors, or sharpness. We'll just work in the main section, and there's this real nice auto correction here. Click on that one, and it puts in what it thinks are good corrections. Now it's obviously way too much. And I found this with most tools that have auto corrections. They really over correct. So you have to dial it back. And you can do that right here with a slider control. Just kind of bring that back. And you can dial that back until you find a setting that you like. I think someplace right around in here, to my eye, looks pretty good. It looks pretty natural as far as the contrast and values. Now one of the nice things about this program is clicking that little gear icon right here. And I can see the different settings, and this allows me to test each one out. You'll see it right on the screen. I'll just uncheck all of these. So here's our exposure correction. That helps to normalize the images. If you look at the histogram up here, it spreads them out further. So I think an exposure correction is a good way to start. Contrast improvement. It's kind of bringing things down a little bit. Dynamic range, not helping. There is no sky, so we can ignore that. Portrait retouch. I'm not really seeing any effect on that, so we'll ignore that one. Auto curves, that helps. And vibrance, not really seeing much in here on vibrance. So for this picture, the exposure correction, contrast improvement, and auto curves seems to be the way to go. I'll just close that. And then we can go back and fine tune the settings in here. I'm just boosting it just a little bit. Something right around in here looks pretty nice as far as the basic tones go, the contrast, the values, and so forth. We still want to warm the picture up though, and of course replace that background. At this point, you can see how we're doing by coming down to this eye right there. Click on that. There's the original, and here's our adjustment. See the skin tones, especially in the arms, are a lot better. And of course the composition is vastly improved. You can also do these side by side right here before and after. So it's beginning to get where we want it. Okay, now we'll begin moving down the list. I tend to, on these kind of controls, work from the top and then work my way down. So here we have our basic color controls up here and then tone controls right down below. Now on saturation, we could use a little bit more saturation possibly or vibrance, it depends upon which way you want to go. Sometimes vibrance will keep your contrast levels the same better. So I'll normally try saturation first, a little bit of that, and see how that does. Now the problem with this particular picture is her hair color. And so that really goes crazy very quickly. Now if we do the same thing in here, actually I'm going to just type this back to zero again. There we are. Do the same thing with the vibrance, just kind of walk it back and forth. And so I can go a lot further on vibrance before the hair begins going really too weird. It's keeping the values better in this case. So I think just a little bit, a little bit more on the virus. Not too much, just a bit. But I think that's pretty good. Maybe about 15 on that. Then she also can step these up and down with these little stepper arrows right there. Clarity is really kind of a sharpening bit, you can see here. So I'll leave this one alone. Put that back to zero again. We'll take care of that with the sharpness tool over here. Temperature, I want to warm the picture up a little bit. So 
Let's push the temperature here a, a bit over here towards the yellow, just a little bit. And then on the temp, that's that. And then the tint right below, a little bit further over here towards the magenta. Just a little bit and trying to get some better flesh tones. I don't care about the background at all. We'll be replacing that. I just want to get the flesh tones looking a little bit more lively. And we're beginning to look pretty good now. Somewhere right around in there. Looks nice for our flesh tones. Let's see how we're doing. It's the original. Here we go. Looks real dead here. Much more alive in this one. So I think we're looking pretty good here on the temp and the tint. We're not going to adjust our tone. Check the exposure a little more or less. I'm not seeing any help in here, so I'll set this back to zero. Contrast. Just a little bit of contrast, not that much. Most pictures can use a little bit more contrast. This one, of course, was real low on contrast to begin with. Check that again. See, real low contrast here. So a little bit of contrast helps. We can try bumping our highlights up a bit. What I'm doing is I'm rocking the control back and forth and seeing the effect and then just trying to rock it into a good setting. And that looks pretty good there. Just a little bit more on the lights. Let's look at our shadows. Just a bit more on the shadow. By doing the lights and the shadows, we're actually increasing the contrast as well. Notice on the histogram, things are beginning to level out a bit. We're getting more level over in here, and these are beginning to spread out a bit. So we're helping our overall look as well. Let's check our whites and blacks. This is the far end. And I think I'll leave the whites alone. And let's look at the blacks. I'm just looking at the girl. I'm ignoring the background. I think just a little bit darker on the blacks. And let's check that again. Looking a lot nicer. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. Already a lot better than we had over here. Okay, that's taken care of. Now, if you want, you can go over here to the colors and bring in some more color. Now, we can kind of boost her coloration again a bit more here. Maybe a bit more orange. Just a little more orange in there. Helps those flesh tones a bit. It's really trying to warm things up. I'm not seeing much on the yellows in here. And let's check our reds. Somewhere around there, better looking flesh tones. I'll leave everything else alone. Now we could come in here and really punch up the hair a bit as well because this is pretty close to our straight aqua. So you're not seeing much control in there. Let's try. Okay, there's more here in the regular greens. I can go more blue with this, or I can go more yellow on that. Now, because we're putting this onto a forest background, I think maybe a little more blue in the hair as opposed to green will help it to separate from the background. So I'll do a little bit of a boost on the greens in here just to push the hair further towards the blue side of the green range. And our color balance, lights and darks, I think I'll leave those alone. They look like we're fine in here for that. Okay, so far so good. Now let's go over here to, actually let's take a fast look here, saturation and luminance, just different ways of looking at the same color controls. So just use the one you want to work with. I'm used to using the hue settings. On sharpness, just find a spot where you can really judge the sharpness and then you can come in here and adjust your sharpness in here. See it really cranks up the detail. You don't want to go too far in any of these things. Just a little bit of sharpness I think won't hurt. Like that looks pretty good. It doesn't need any blurring and I think we're looking okay. Again let's double check. Much better. All right so far so good. So come in here we've adjusted the treatment. We can also work in black and white if you want to right there. Same thing. But we'll stick with our color setting. Switch over to tools in here. We've done the crop. We can do the geometry if it needs to be corrected for distortions, like you're looking at buildings in the wrong direction or something. You can vignette, darken or lighten the outside edges. 
tone mapping, noise reduction curves, fine tuning your tones and color in here, working with curves. And we can choose different channels, RGB, just the red, the green, or the blue. We don't really need any noise reduction on this or applying any film grain. Now before I change the background, let's take a look at our retouching. The reason why I'm changing this first is I want to do the retouching on just the face here and the figure and ignore the background and leave that alone. Once you change the background and finalize that, the background is in place. You can step back steps and take it back out again, but it's kind of in place once you do it. So we'll do that last. Let's go to Retouch. And only thing that we really need here is the Portrait Magic. Now you can zoom in if you want to on this. There's a zoom control right down here. Just click on the plus sign. We can actually zoom into the picture. What we care about really is just the face. Healing brush, not needed. Red eye, there's no red eye in there, not needed. Don't need clone stamp or adjustment. But we'll do the portrait magic. You can choose a style you want to look at. Here's an overall enhancement. Sometimes you'll see, you see these little pop-up tutorials that come with the program as well. They're kind of built into the program. And very, very useful. Now for these, you can just click on it and see what the effect is pretty easily. Let's just come down here. Let's try the light tan. I think the light tan helps a little bit, warms the image up again. Remove face shine, remove redness, smooth skin, bright lips. There's a smooth skin, there's a bright lips. Just different options. I think I'll do the light tan on that. Adds just a little bit more warmth into the face in here. And it's looking pretty nice. You can also do custom settings as well. Adjust your smoothness, redness, glare, skin tone. And some real nice little controls in here for finding your skin tone down here, your light and color balance in here. Work on your eyes, sharpness and contrast for just the eyes themselves. Work on just the eyebrows, work on just the lips. It actually finds all these areas in here in your image and allows you to work with them. There's a little bit of shadowing on her teeth. So you can possibly whiten the teeth up a little bit. If we go real far, they suck, they, that knocks out the shadow. So I'll lighten the teeth up quite a bit to compensate for the shadowing that we have in there. But I think pretty, pretty well this is looking nice. Maybe just a little more saturation on the lips, giving a bit more of a, a lipstick look, just a bit. She doesn't have much lipstick on anyway, so there's not much of what you can work with in here. Okay, there we go. So we've adjusted our portrait. And to get back to the main menu, click on that little arrow, back to our main menu again. Okay, that's looking real nice. Let's click on the fit tool right here and it fits back on our screen again. Okay, now we're ready to change that background. Back over to tools and the change background. And let this load in, there we go. Starts off with a little tutorial here on how to work with the background change. We can cancel that one, just get that out of the way. There we go. Now the way you work with this is you have two brushes here, an object brush and a background brush, and you can make corrections by using the eraser brush. You can also adjust the brush size and blur the border of that. And you can see your preview in here on your opacity on your background. We'll start off with the object. So we take this and then Come around and draw just inside the object. You don't have to go clear to the edge. And across the bottom down there. And then back around this side. And just finish this off right there. No need to fill it in. You're just doing an outline like this. We'll then switch to the background tool and drag this outside of your image. Don't overlap, just drag it outside. What you're doing is you are showing the program the areas that you want to have either as your foreground or your background. It's then going to look at the division line in between these two lines. So we're kind of making like a little road in here, a little two-lane highway, and the division right in here, that's the part it's going to look at. You see right there, it comes in as a real fast, quick, 
adjustment and does a real nice job, as you can see, on cleaning out that background, even around the hair down here and around this. Now, the tighter you're in without touching, the better the result is going to be. You can go back and you can adjust the brush size. You can adjust the blur in your border. You can adjust the opacity here so you can see it, see how well it's working or not. You can also reset back to the original. But I think this is looking pretty good. Click on Next. This is where corrections can be made to the object or the background. I think we're just fine. Click on Next once more. And we now can come in here and do a final check. This is against white, as you can see. And it's a little bit blocky up in here. So we can try extending the edge. That doesn't help. Reducing the edge a little bit. A little bit of a reduction on that. A little edge blur might help. I'm just checking all of my settings right now to see how well we're doing. Do it against gray. Looks pretty good, actually. I think we're just fine. Just a couple little small adjustments in there on that edge. Now, at this point, you can save this with a transparent background if you want to, and then use it in any other image you want. Or we can apply a background image. We'll go ahead and do a background image. Because of quite a few images in here. There we go. You also can load your own background right there. But we'll stick with the ones that they have. Now, different backgrounds will give you different quality effects depending upon your image and the, you know, how well the edge actually works. Because these all look pretty good. Real fast changes. But the one I like is the forest background. She was already in kind of a foresty background to begin with. And there we go. It looks good. I'll go ahead and I'll apply that. That's applying the background. Let's now I'll apply the whole, whole bit. And there it is. Now, last thing we want to do in here, I want to bring the values closer together on this. And an easy way to do that is to use a little bit of tone mapping. Click on this. You can choose a color. I'm going to you know, just warm it up a bit. So you can actually change the overall tone of the whole image this way. And this oftentimes will help to pull images together if you are doing this kind of replacing of a background. So I think a bit warmer is nice. We can adjust the color over here you want, if you want to. But I'll go with the warmer color. And then we can adjust the amount right here. There is none. And adjust a, just a little bit in there to help pull the colors together. And we'll apply that. And there we go. Let's now look at our before and after. There's the before. And there's the after. And as you can see, if you take out all of my talking in here, it actually goes very, very quickly. So it's a real nice tool for doing these kinds of quick and easy image adjustments. Now, it is really aimed pretty much at pictures of people. It really, really works on that very, very well. There are some things you have to hunt around. There are a couple of tools in here for landscapes. But it really is focused on this kind of the image, the kind of things that we do all the time. So it's a real nice program for that. It's not expensive. Again, it's in three versions. The cheapest one's about, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks. The most expensive one is less than 60. I think it's about 56. So it's an inexpensive program, but does an awful lot and does it very quickly and very easily. Now it's not as advanced as a program like Adobe's Photoshop Elements, which has a lot more tools and it can be real, real specific in there and do some amazing things. It doesn't go that far, but as far as tools that help you to do your work, you see there's a lot of AI involved in this one. And it's comparable to a lot of other programs in the same basic price range, but this one's really very easy to use. Of course, it doesn't compare, nothing compares to Adobe's flagship Adobe Photoshop program. But for an inexpensive price, I think which will do the work very quickly and very easily, this is a very good choice, a great, great choice actually for this kind of image enhancement and image retouching. Now they have a free limited version. They can go ahead and try it out and see how it works. I'm actually using that version right here for this demo. This is actually their limited free version. It's about a 15 day trial on this. Plenty to get used to how the program runs and see if you like it or not without spending any money. Only thing that this won't do is it won't save and it won't print. But that's fine for learning how the program works and seeing if you want to actually use it. And again, at the price, this is really very cheap. It's, it's the same price range as a lot of plugins you might get for other more advanced programs. You should take a look at it. Again, it's PhotoWorks. 
This is version 6, brand new version, and I'll put a link to their website in my video support page. You'll find a link for that, of course, in the description. There'll be a link for their website and also a link where you can download this video if you want to keep this video as a reference tool. And don't forget, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button. And of course, share through social media. Just click on that share button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to my channel as well. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.